Hello and welcome to The Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space and today I'm gearing up for the Junk Journal July. I really thought I'd have a go and support Meg at Meg Journals and you can find her on Instagram and the prompt card that uh, has been produced for July's prompts is on Instagram. Uh, it's a daily prompt of things to help you think about whilst you're journaling. So I thought I'd have a little go at dipping into that but for that I need a journal, a dedicated journal for July and have a landscape journal so not that way and for that I've got this bit of fabric as you can see it's old, it's scruffy and frayed at the edges. I don't want a journal as big as that but I do want it sort of like that. Okay we so sort of have a guide here Well, I didn't know that was going to uh, work. There you go. N whoopee. Almost. <laughs> Another use for the ruler. Another use for the metal ruler. I mean, it is old. It is old fabric. But that's lovely. I mean, there we go. I, I will... I will use that, I'll stamp on that and that's something else isn't it? There, there's two bits there for stamps and embellishment. Thinking of dyeing the whole thing because it is a bit too white and bright. Okay I'm repurposing the lid of a storage box which is from um, Ikea and uh, it's just the, just the lid of the medium sized box. Wet my fabric a little bit just with some water I'm just dampening it down. I'm going to do that front and back. Okay, just nothing special. Water. Just so that it's damp. That doesn't feel too wet, just damp. Um, let's lose the tray for a minute because I'm going to use that to do some dye. But for this now, what I want to do is... Fold the fabric, so yes that helps now because it's wet, so I'm going to just do a fan, folding it back and forth, just half an inch width each time. I'll give you the length of the fabric. Um, I'm just going to do a very, very loose interpretation based very loosely on the Japanese art of shibori dyeing fabric. Um, putting my finger there and I'm folding down. So I've made a little angle. Then I'm putting my finger there and folding up again. Finger there, folding down. So I'm making, well I'm just going up and down really but making a wave, like a pleat is what I'm doing. You don't have to do this, you could do a scrunch, but it's sort of a tie-dye effect that I'm trying to end up with. And now I'm just going to sort of bring that up a bit. Can you see? So, so to hold that together, I'm putting an elastic band around it just temporarily, just so it doesn't ping open. Yeah, maybe they, those are all lovely. I'll, I'll tell you what they are in a minute. And. Uh, Oh, maybe this one. Right, so this is a Distress Spray Stain, which is probably what I want. Peacock Feathers, that's what we're doing. And then I've got also Mermaid Lagoon, Faded Jeans and uh, Speckled Egg. And those are all, those are oxides. So that may have an effect. Put some on the tray. 
get my water. Ooh, make a mess. <laughs> and then dip it in and let it soak up on the edges. And then this is where I don't really want to get too mucky because I've got to go out later. <laughs> We're going to turn it over and dip that side in. So that's the blue or the peacocky stain. See? And, and now we'll just add in. Drop on the table. What was this one? It's quite nice. That was the faded jeans spray. And just anywhere where I can see the white colour, take that off. can see the effects. Oh, well, that's fun, isn't it? Okay, I have indeed smurfed myself with the blue fingers here, but this is the result. And uh, it's been ironed and dried, dried and ironed. It's very bright and vibrant and very different. Um, so what I want to do is work with it and have a think that that will probably be my front cover. So that's the background and then I had a look at some scraps of fabric and embellished bits that I've collected and I thought the whole project, the whole reason we're doing this is because we're trying to use up the things that we don't usually use. I've got like this, look, isn't that beautiful? Thought I would, I can glue them on with Fabri Tac and then I can go round the edges, leave them the frayed bit, and how about a whole load of these sort of things, which are absolutely stunning. Pull that over. So now I've got a bit of a crease line there. I can understand where my spine will be. Maybe not have that on the back. So this sort of, it, sort of Indian, Bohemian, um, yeah, Asian vibe. But summertime, perhaps we want that one there. It's all right, isn't it? I like it. I like it as a little summer journal for July when we're all, you know, it's all summery. I think this is, uh, this could work. I don't know, that's a lovely scrap. That's a bit big. I want to see if I've got anything else. I'm not sure if I want to put anything on the back now. I think maybe the front would be perfect and then that would be left. just want to glue them down with the Fabri-Tac now, which is a waterproof and washable, like machine washable, silicone glue. Just beautiful Asian brocade and embellished embroidery. Just stunning. really really fun and I'm trapping it in over here that's better good and then I shall try and do something to capture them in maybe with gold thread okay this is it back from the sewing machine I've managed to sew round it it shrunk in because of the sewing which I've put on there that's not a problem in fact that's just created another opportunity now 
um, to do more of a layered look so I think I'm going to do another die piece and I shall be gluing it onto that. This is hilarious. This journal is making itself. I had no idea what I was doing and I have come out with a totally tropical colour here. Um, <laughs> I was going to do a very muted toned um, botanical journal and now apparently we've got some sort of psychedelic thing happening. Um, because we were talking about faded jeans I then thought uh, about denim and I've cut another strip and I just thought that that might be an idea just because I think this fabric is quite fragile. It sort of tears if I'm not careful and I do want strength to to the book cover. Hmm, fun. Fun, fun. Do I like the colour of it? And then that will be the inside. Otherwise it's going to be like that. Something's missing, something's happening. What if I put a bit of scruffy silk scarf in there? Oh, that's better, isn't it? Yes, like that. Right, good. Okay, so there we are. This is becoming my Indian summer journal for Junk Journal July. Now, I had said that I wanted pages of that size, but this has obviously evolved and I think plans need to change so we'll just sort of say we're going to be making them wider, bigger so we'll still fold it in half of an A4 but we'll just make it a bit bigger. So I'm going to glue this down and then I've just got to think how I'm going to get my pages in because what I don't really want is a load of sewing down there and spoiling that so I might do the sewing on this bit and then glue that on last I think that's what I'll do that is the plan Let's go with that. I have a brand new bottle of Fabri-Tac. Woohoo! I'm going to put this on. Just a nice bead of glue. And then stick it all down. It doesn't matter if I'm heavy handed with the glue because I should be covering it up with our top coat anyway. So it's just probably best that I get a nice coverage here. That's a bit extra. That's all there is to it. It does feel a bit flimsy. I think I might want something. Hmm. I'm going to cut those down. The more wonky and higgledy piggledy the better. Okay, and then I could even have a little reinforcement there. We're not looking for precision at all. Junk journal, remember? So these are only scraps, it's just using what you've got. This is just um, brown packaging tape. It's got some strength to it and it is very sticky. It isn't, it isn't a masking tape, it's actually meant for parcels, it's called Eco Tape. Then I just have another bit of fabric and then we'll sew that on, so I'm going to glue this down now. Now I will be going around this with the sewing machine but I'll aim to capture in the fabric edge rather than this card but we'll see I haven't gone right to the edge with the glue just to, just to avoid gunging up my needle but uh, I go through needles quite frequently anyway I mean I change them over you do have to do that if you're going to be using card and what have you 
this is my front. Well, that's that's quite good. And then I can just bend this and manipulate this bit here as well. That's it. And then there's quite a nice soft softness to that. Right, I found a fabric that I'm happy with. It's um, sort of a two-tone. It's got white flowers on one side and then these cream coffee-coloured flowers on the other side. I'm going to keep it so that's the side that shows up inside the journal. And then what I want to see peeping through on the other side is the white ones. So before I can sew I need to glue all the way around with the Fabri-Tac again and just make sure I capture in all the edges. I'm just going over in a nice zigzag way and just line it up where it needs to be. Check it's okay on the other side. Yes, smooth it down. Okay, I've sewn round in a straight stitch all the way around. So it's all tethered down and secure. I've got enough um, interest going on on the edges, but it's not going to go anywhere. I'm going to do the binding there, and then we'll just hide it in there like that. And that is how to do a layered journal, which I've never done before. So that was fun doing that with you today. OK, the time has come to cut the papers up and get them into the correct size. I've got a guide piece of paper here which I've folded and this is five and a half inches. So I'm looking for five and a half inches and uh, it's A4 paper so we are with eleven and a half inches. And I'm going to tear the papers down from the wider side just because it's easier than trying to pull the smaller side. I've got tracing paper coffee dyed paper avocado dyed paper tea and coffee and uh, stained with an old stencil was a fun session. <laughs> Packaging paper, craft paper, brown uh, brown paper packaging paper. It's lovely that, really nice. And uh, more avocado dyed. That's the last one. And then I've got a nice pack of scraps to do something with. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fold these in half. And then these pages will be the ones that I'm going to be sewing into the Indian Summer Journal. OK, so that's my pack of papers which I'm going to put into... Here I'm going to arrange them and then they'll probably they'll sit there. There's a gap there, that's absolutely fine because I want to have tabs. So I've left a gap. I've got some extra bits that I'm going to be putting in. This was some jelly printing, and I've got some sort of accountancy paper there. And I've got this, I think I need to tear that bit down, and then I think we have everything. Now I'm looking for 13 pieces of paper and I'm not sure if I'm counting that because it's so thin so we might just add that anyway. I want to hide that wording though when it comes to that turn. That can be my middle. Oh my goodness this feels like it might be we might be doing this. What I want. Maybe I want this. Sort of 
going to be a little tuck spot in there perhaps. I've just found this page. I don't really want to be restricted by just 13 pages, so I think I'm going to put in 15. I can't remember what I've got now, but it doesn't matter because I'll probably be folding things up or cutting things out, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, but turn it up so that we've got something like that and just make sure that I get the right size. So that is, that's like that because that just sort of looks beachy to me so I want to put that in there. Okay, I think that would be quite fun echoing that. So we just fold this one up and then Just for a bit of interest, we might find something to stick on there. I just noticed that Meg put one in hers, I'd like to see what she does, and then I can use her inspiration or come up with my own. Either way, we have options and that's what we want. Right, next thing is to make some holes in your paper and pin everything together to stop it all moving. Um, we're not going to be precise here at all, but we are just going to need everything to stay in one position. So that's oh, going to be tricky with shorter pages. Okay, and then we will just aim for the middle bring the book cover towards us as we poke so you're putting the tool low down just poke through and don't get it on the table Come, because it's a fabric you want to wiggle right the way through to a thicker bit there and that will really help finding your thread and your needle and then I'm just going to come about about half an inch in, just, yeah, about half an inch in. Same again, pull it through forwards and poke it through, sort of a like that. You want to keep the tool very close to the book pages. And you just sort of have to manoeuvre it any way you can, really. And then final one in a similar position on the other end. Next thing is to get a nice big needle, tapestry needle and some thread. I'm going to use wax thread which is a book binding thread in a dark colour. This is sort of like a tan or an orangey colour and I'm doing three lengths of the project. One, two, three and that thread the needle and this is the way we're doing slightly different from what you may have seen before instead of going in through the center we are going from the outside in so the knot will end up on the outside and you won't see anything on the inside so we go in one way, out another way. Can't find the hole, that's no good. Back out. Oop, don't poke yourself. Back out. All the way over and into the hole over here. That's it, and then through the middle again, avoiding going through, and then come out the other side, and that's that. That's all, all you need to do. 
got way too much thread, as usual. <laughs> the clips can come off, or the, certainly those big bulky ones. We'll just check that we're all in. Yes, we are. And we're happy. Yep. And then we tighten everything up. I don't need any length here, I'm going to cut it off. That's brilliant, isn't it? So that's nice and neat, it's all on the outside. I've gone either side of that um, main thread there, just checking that it's nice and taut and tying it off. That's it, I'm going to go round again. Put another knot in it. That's probably ample, but just while we are here, I'll do one more because we can, and you can glue it if you're worrying about any of that slipping, uh, but we're going to be gluing over that anyway. So what I'm going to do is just cut those very short, and then they'll just be hidden in the project, and nobody will ever know. Here she is, so far, and then the pages, and I'm going to have lots of embellished tabs, that's that's going to have, be how we get get past that. It would, have been, would it have been nicer? No, it wouldn't be, because we're going to decorate it, we have things poking out, we have all the usual, all my paper clips and things, none of which is to hand at the moment, here's one, and so we're going to be pinning things together and having dangles and it'll all just look bohemian and cool and interesting and fun and treasured and delicious. So the next thing is to finish off the piece de resistance and put on this. So I'm going to glue this bit first. Especially round there. And then we'll get the spine sorted out and we'll go from there. I don't want great big globules so I'm smoothing that over, putting on my, it's like dressing it, it's absolutely brilliant. How fun is this? Okay, so I could open it up, that would be easier. Get that on. And we'll go from there. You can see where I need to go. I don't want to see glue. I just want to hope for the best that that's the right thing. Glue down there like that. We can come in and go around the edges in a minute. And just smooth over any big globs so that they don't go soaking through. Bring this over. Stretch out the fabric as we squash that on. Oh gosh, this feels so soft and squishy and tactile. And now I want to make sure that these peeling bits come out and so that they're all part of it. So let's go from this way. And so Fabri-Tac and um, three-in-one glue are very similar but F Fabri-Tac or Fabri-Fix is most definitely the better option when dealing with fabric and its claim to fame is that it's washable in the machine you know it's machine washable um, it also adheres metal not so much jewellery but metal leather and suede whereas the three in one does everything else it's not it's waterproof but it's not washable um, and it won't do leather and it won't do suede so it is a really really strong good versatile glue 
and I'm just going to focus now on getting this bit right. Because that dyeing um, of the original fabric, which you now can't see too much of, this, it just sparked off inspiration to do something as tactile as that. I just want to make sure everything's there and it's not going to start moving around. Oh, guys, I really think that's very nice. And then we've got this. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, once we've embellished it and we've got some bits sticking out the side and we get more little fabric pieces, everything will start to just make sense. Because it does feel a bit short, if I'm honest, at the moment. But it won't, because it's going to have, you know, the option. Could even have a pen in there. You know, that, that could be a, where you put your pen and you could do a little holder. So that's cool. That's a good idea, isn't it? I might even do that. Well, we'll see how we go at the end because there might not be any space by the time I've finished. By the time I've finished with it, I made a little tag here, ticket, pocket. don't know what it did, but it was just some bit of old junk mail ticket thing. And I've covered it with more of this silky sari scarf arrangement and a stamp and I thought I might see if I can stamp July on there or something so this has been great oh do subscribe to the channel if you'd like to have a watch and see how I get on with the junk journal July and of course other things as well and I hope you've been enjoying or following along with the coffee pot challenge we're having some fun on the Facebook page. I've got some swaps and things going up there and also the Coffee Pot Challenge prompts get put up there too if you can't find them on the videos. And um, follow me on Instagram because I shall post up pictures here. I'm also trying very hard to get, get myself a bit more organised with Pinterest and things like that so that you can see past um, makes and... Uh, inspiration and uh, you know it's all happening it, it all takes time doesn't it but uh, I'm definitely having fun and um, I'm definitely uh, ooh, finding that this has popped up hang on this one extra extra there and I think with it you just have to be a little bit patient and just put something heavy on it. So, nearly there. And then what I want to do is I'll print out Meg's um, prompts a bit better. I've just got them on a, on a little uh, photo paper there, which I'm not happy with because it hasn't got all of them. But the idea was to put them there, so I'll try and work out how to print them somewhat better. See if she's put up some file somewhere that I haven't found. And um, and then that you know that'll be brilliant. Or I'll make a tag. Something's going to go there anyway. And we've got to decorate or put some writing there. This will be the beginning, which is the first prompt. And um, yes, so quick flip through. That worked out with the doily and the vellum or the tracing paper. And then we've got the blues and the pinks pinks all together to do a double spread and sort of possible pocket ideas I like the sun because this is my summertime journal and then um, that's lovely that reminds me of the seaside and echoes the colours on the front got pocket there as well and then this is old grunge bit of grunge and then we'll have to cover, cover up the marketing there and then this that's nice with the waves. That's your central page. And then it all just repeats over this side. And uh, just some lovely, lovely effects on the paper there. Avocado dyed paper there with uh, a mark that was off of the iron pan when I dried it. And then coming round here, really nice little impression off of a lace doily 
and again we can just cover that bottom bit up writing space and the reverse of what we've seen at the front and this was a turmeric spice dye paper which is completely fitting with this whole journal which does give me reminiscent ideas of India or Goa or somewhere like that somewhere fun and vibrant and summery it's also a bit of a joke in the UK as well the Indian summer when we feel like we haven't had a very good summer which is most years and we get to the end of July or August usually and the children are about to go back to school everybody without fail there's always well we're going to get an Indian summer. Have you heard there's an Indian summer coming? And it's supposed to be a heat wave that you get right at the end, sort of in September. <laughs> Sometimes it happens, very rarely, but we are always in hope of an, a British Indian summer. So here we are. <laughs> this is my entry for the Junk Journal July. I'm very pleased to be uh, doing this with you all and... I'd like you to have a go and see how easy that came together and uh, a nice soft journal, really tactile and fun. Doesn't have to be what I've got here, go to a charity shop or, or a thrift shop or wherever it is you go to find um, clothing that you could cut up or go through your own clothes, see if there's things there that you would never wear again. Uh, got any evening wear with some embellishments on and it just, you know, it's not your thing anymore, it doesn't fit or, you know, it's old. This is perfect, it's perfect. Little embellishments and um, sequined bits and embroidery things. All could be used, it could all be used. Okay! So, above all else, guys, just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye-bye now.